We hit stage one of Governor Little's reopening Idaho plan at a pretty good pace back on May 1st. Then we kind of kicked it into the next gear as it went into stage two two weeks later. And we hit that runner's high so easily about things. Two weeks after that, we moved bars opening back up into stage three. Yeah, we were really going. And then the tread sort of came off our shoes and we apparently pulled our hamstring as we fell across the finish line for stage four because it seems we haven't been able to pick ourselves up off the ground. So here we are stuck in stage four statewide for at least two more weeks with Ada County in stage three. Governor Little making that announcement earlier today after acknowledging we did not as a state hit the benchmarks to move out of stage four. As COVID cases continue to climb every day, specifically here in the Treasure Valley, the question was asked, have we really made any progress though since March? During a news conference with Governor Little and health officials this afternoon, Joe Paris asked about how far we have come. And Joe joins us now. Joe, I know testing has been a big part of this conversation over the last few weeks and it's kind of really over the last week or so. Where do we stand as a state when it comes to testing? Well, Brian, as we've talked about here on the 208, it is really tricky, the testing in some areas. As we've described, as more and more people had confirmed cases of coronavirus, more and more people wanted to go get tests or they had symptoms, so they had to go get tests. Now, with that said now, the state of Idaho is at the point now where not anybody can get a test. They're prioritizing who can get a COVID test in terms of the priority level of that person. Maybe they're an at-risk group or if they're looking at someone who has those symptoms. Now, despite all that, Dr. Christine Hahn, the state epidemiologist, says the data that's still coming in through the state, it is valuable and it is painting a picture of what we're seeing out there. At the same time, though, Dr. Hahn admits the state may have to take a look on what changes may need to be made for the testing strategy. The testing task force today is going to be looking at do we need to revise those criteria in light of what's happening now? Do we need to recommend different groups get tested and how can we kind of make sure that happens? So I acknowledge that we need to reevaluate and um, change going forward because of the wave of cases. Now, earlier this week, Dr. David Pate, who's a member of the governor's coronavirus working group, he said here on the 208 that he thinks things now are as bad, if not worse, than they were in late March and April. A big part of that is the spread of the virus by asymptomatic carriers. Now, Dr. Pate's comments on this show were labeled by some as being too bold. Some called it fear mongering. Now, I asked Dr. Hahn about Pate's comments focused specifically on the Treasure Valley. Here's what she had to say. I absolutely agree with Dr. Pate that it's a very concerning time and what we hope happens, as the governor alluded to, that people at our high risk are taking this very seriously, uh, keeping away from others, wearing their masks, staying at home if possible, because it's, the virus is out there. We know that and it's, it's uh, something that people need to be very aware of. As we've mentioned to you this afternoon, Governor Little announced today Idaho did not qualify to move out of stage four. Not really a surprise to anyone. Now, here's a conversation being had, though. When Idaho went from stage three to stage four, Governor Little admitted candidly that Idaho barely qualified for that move. The weeks following the move to stage four, there's been a lot of COVID spikes here in the Treasure Valley and in some select spots across the state. Now, Governor Little was asked if in hindsight he thinks the move may have been premature. Now, the bottom line from Governor Little on the statewide move to stage four is that we hit the appropriate numbers, and that's why the move was made. And that's been our gold standard. That's what continues to be the gold standard. I don't think anybody forecasts the kind of community spread we'd have, particularly in this the local area when we went into that stage. I, I, hate, to, I hate to look backwards uh, unless I think I'm going to learn something from it. We should have given better direction uh, uh, to some of the facilities that we know now were our higher spread areas. So a big emphasis today from Governor Little and health officials is despite what the state may be doing as a whole, the local health districts do have the power to make more of those localized moves like we saw here in Ada County, for example, going back to stage three. Again, statewide, we are still in stage four. It'll be reevaluated in two weeks from now, Brian. Uh, again, though, for that data for us to hit out of stage four, we're going to have to see some major changes. And we kind of anticipated him handing off some of the responsibility today, but what he just said for the governor to say he didn't think anybody could forecast the kind of community spread that we have now. 
I think there's probably a lot of people out there that kind of did, including a couple of people on his coronavirus working group that said, if we don't really keep this thing locked down, we're going to see the kind of spread that we're seeing now. Yeah, and that's what a lot of the arguments have been made about moving the entire state back to stage three instead of just the localized attempts. Uh, Brian, again, a very tricky situation, but what we saw Governor Little allude to earlier, you just touched on it. These local areas, if they're having a problem like we saw with Blaine County back in March, early April, they're hoping the health districts will act on it at the local level. All right, we'll keep tabs on it, of course, on a daily basis and see how it plays out, especially over the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Joe.